the graph in red is g of x uh, which is given as cos of x minus uh, 30 degrees and then there's a point q on g of x right so on g of x we have a point q and then the other graph we have is f which is given by f of x is equal to tan of bx and then on f of x we have a point p right uh, we have a coordinate p uh, with 90 degrees for the x and one for the y and then the first question uh, 6.1 it says let's determine the value of b uh, b is this variable here on our graph f of x right uh, but then lucky for us we have a point p on f of x so if we substitute point p on f of x we're gonna have a y and then x value so the only variable we're gonna be left with is b and then we're gonna be able to find it right so we're saying let's substitute point p of uh, 90 degrees and one on in f of x right and then if we do that we're gonna get uh so we're saying that uh 90 degrees is the x and one is the y value right so we're gonna have one is equals to tan of b multiply by um, 90 degrees right so you can see what we're gonna do now we're gonna take a uh, tan inverse on both sides right so we're gonna get a uh, tan inverse of one is equals to uh, tan inverse of uh, tan of b multiplied by uh, 90 degrees so we're going to get tan inverse of one is equals to b multiplied by 90 degrees so it should be easy to see here that we're going to divide both sides by 90 degrees right so we're going to have tan inverse of 1 divided by 90 degrees and then on the right hand side we're also dividing by 90 degrees uh, so b will be equals to uh, tan inverse of 1 is 45 degrees we're dividing that by 90 degrees and that will be equals to 1 divided by 2 so the value of b in this uh, equation that we're dealing with here is 1 divided by 2 uh, now we can go ahead and do 6.2 so 6.2 says uh, let's write down the coordinates of a uh, the turning point of g right the equation of g of x is cos of x minus uh, 30 degrees and we're supposed to write down uh, the coordinates of a right uh, so we have a which has an x and a y value a is said to be a turning point of g of x right um one thing we know about this graph cos of x minus 30 degrees is that uh, the highest point it can reach is one so that tells us that the y value of a the turning point of g of x is one right so now we can have a uh, of coordinates x and then for the y value we have one so now we can just basically substitute a in our equation g of x find the x value and we're essentially done so let me show you what i'm talking about so in place of g of x we have one and that will be close to uh, cos of x minus 30 degrees uh, it will be obvious we're going to take uh, cos inverse on both sides so we're going to have a uh, cos inverse of one is equals to uh, cos inverse of uh, cos of x minus uh, 30 degrees uh, so cos inverse of one will be equals to x minus uh, 30 degrees uh, it will be easy to see now that cos inverse of 1 plus 30 degrees is equals to x so what is cos inverse of 1 cos inverse of 1 is 0 and then plus uh, 30 degrees is equals to x so essentially we're saying that x is equal to 30 degrees right so the coordinates of a uh, will be 30 degrees for the x and 1 for the y right and we essentially done with that one let's do 6.3 uh, 6.3 saying to us uh, pq is parallel uh, to the y-axis pq is parallel to the y-axis so here's pq here i'm just you know highlighting it for the sake of clarity uh, if that is true let's determine the coordinates of q right uh, before we go any further 
Uh, let's analyze uh, this statement that is saying PQ is parallel to the y-axis. What is the consequence of PQ being parallel to the y-axis? The y-axis is a vertical line, right? So the x value is constant on the y-axis. It is zero, right? Uh, if PQ is parallel to the y-axis, then P and Q should share the same x value. We know the x value of p is 90 degrees. So q should also have an x value of 90 degrees, right? So now we can say that q has an x value of 90 degrees and a y value of y, right? So now we can just substitute uh, this coordinate uh, 90 degrees on our equation uh, for g of x, right? Because q lies on g of x. So now we can see that uh, g of x is equals to cos of x minus uh, 30 degrees. Uh, like for us, for point Q, we know the x, so we're gonna have uh, g of x being equals to cos of uh, 90 degrees minus uh, 30 degrees. So we just basically have cos of 60 degrees, right? Uh, we know fully well that uh, cos of 60 degrees is equals to one divided by two so our coordinates for q uh we have uh 90 degrees and a half let's do 6.4 so we have 6.4 uh 6.4 is saying let's write down the equation of the asymptotes of y is equals to tan of uh b multiply by x plus uh, 20 degrees for x an element of uh, minus 180 degrees to 180 degrees so let's start from the basics first uh, we have tan of x right if we have tan of x we know fully well that we are going to have two asymptotes right one at 90 degrees and then the other one on uh, minus 90 degrees uh, these are not the only asymptotes we have but let's stick to these ones right now uh, but then if instead of tan x we are given tan of uh, a half x right uh, like we have in this equation because we know fully well that uh, the value of b is a half right then this value of b will increase uh, the period by two let me show you what i'm talking about uh, we know fully well that the period uh, is equals to 180 divided by b uh, this is true for tan right so if uh, b is one then the period is just 180 right and we know fully well that the period of tan is 180 but then now b is a half so we have 180 uh, divided by a half which is equals to uh, 360 right so you can see that uh, that value of b increase the period of tan by a factor of two right so the same thing is going to happen to the positions of the asymptotes they are going to increase by a factor of two uh, so what are we saying uh, from 90 degrees we're going to have uh, 180 degrees and then from minus 190 degrees we're going to have minus 180 degrees right uh, now we just have to account for this plus 20 degrees so let's have a turn of a half x plus uh, 20 degrees so what does this 20 degree I do to a graph it shifts the graph along the horizontal axis right along the X so if you have plus 20 then we're going to move 20 units to the left if we had minus 20 we're going to move uh, 20 units to the right it's counterintuitive but it is how it is so now our asymptotes will also move uh, 20 units to the left right so instead of um 180 we're gonna have 180 minus 20 which is uh 160 right and then here instead of minus 180 we're gonna have uh minus 180 minus 20 uh, which is minus 200 the question says that we need the asymptotes to be between uh, minus 180 to 180 degrees right uh, including minus 180 and 180 uh, clearly here our nearest asymptotes is at uh, minus uh, 200 and 160 degrees right uh, minus 200 is not in the range that we're interested in so here the only asymptote we're gonna have uh, will be at uh, 160 degrees uh, let's do uh, 
6.5 is saying let's determine the range of h if h of x is equals to uh, 2 multiplied by uh, g of x plus 1. So let's look at g of x first. We know that uh, g of x is equals to uh, cos of x uh, plus or minus 30 degrees. So let's start with the range of this graph, right? And then we're going to account for these two here and this one here. So what is the range of uh, cos of x? Uh, we know that uh, the range of cos of x, uh, we have y uh, running from minus 1 uh, to 1, right? Uh, but then here in this situation, we have uh, this 2 here. So what does that 2 do? That 2 stretches our graph along the vertical axis, right? So if we just have 2 multiplied by g of x, uh, then the range will become uh, minus 2 uh, and then y uh, to uh, 2, right? Uh, but then not only do we have that, now we have uh, this plus 1 here, right? So what does this that plus 1 do? The plus 1, it moves the graph up and down, right? If you have a plus, it moves the graph up. If you have a minus, it moves the graph down. So when we have 2 multiplied by uh, g of x, right? Our graph will look uh, something like this, right? So the lowest point will be at minus 2 and the highest point will be at 2. But then if we plus 1, right? So we have 2 uh, multiplied by g of x plus 1. If we plus 1, then we're going to move our graph a unit upwards, right? So instead of the graph looking like that, uh, now it will look uh, something like this so now our highest point is at 2 plus 1 which is 3 and our lowest point is at uh, minus 1 so now uh, we can see that the range of this graph will be uh, minus 1 and then y also runs up to uh, 3 because we have moved the graph one unit up